Welcome to Rock Your Talk. I'm Lisa Reed, host of Rock Your Talk, founder of Get Speaking Gigs Now and trainer of productive learning. Today, I'm pretty excited because we have Marcia Reiner in the house. Woo -woo. Hello, Marcia. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to hear about what you're going to share with us. Marcia is going to talk about business survival 101. So I think that would probably classify as a good topic for just about anybody who's in business because she's going to have some tips. And now uh, you're like thinking, well, maybe my business is already alive. That's good. That's good. But we can always improve. We can always get better. So make sure and grab your, your pens and your notepads and get ready for her tips. Um, before, we, before we go into those cool tips, I want to share a couple of gifts that I have for you. Um, as the founder of Get Speaking Gigs Now, I work with speakers to help them get booked stay booked and attract their clients through speaking. And of course, I have a free gift for you. You can go to getspeakinggigsnow.com and grab five top tips to get more speaking gigs. So make sure and get that. Uh, also, I'm a trainer for productive learning and we are all about personal development and really like understanding our emotions, understanding our thoughts. How do I change my thoughts to have different results, different, different actions? And I have a gift for you there. It's called New Thinking for New Actions. It's a new course that we just developed. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's a five part uh, series and that, that can come just straight to your inbox at productivelearning.com slash gift. So if you have not picked that up already and you've got something you're grappling with, well, I suggest you grab it because it's really powerful work. <laughs> so awesome. there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple of cool things we've got for you. And then uh, Marcia, <laughs> tell us a little bit about you. I mean, I know you, but our audience doesn't, may not know you. So tell us a little bit yeah. about you. Great. Well, thanks first of all for letting me on Rock Your Talk. Um, I think this is a wonderful platform to, to share some ideas with listeners. So I am a business strategist on a mission and that mission is to help entrepreneurs to increase their profits and drive their growth by using strategic planning. So I think that that's um, uh, something that business owners are forgetting to use. And the clients that I've worked with that are using the strategic planning have really been able to increase their profitability and really know what they're going, what they have going on. So uh, I've been doing this for a few years. I love it. It's really exciting and it gets me to meet a whole lot of people. Very cool. So yeah, so tell us, I know you're talking today about business survival 101. What, yeah. what are some of the things that we need to keep in mind as business owners, entrepreneurs, or business professionals? I'm sure it applies to, to a lot of different folks. Yeah, great. So we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to go back to basics and we're going to roll up our sleeves and go what I call old school on our business. Cool. And, All right. Right. And um, these three tips that I'm going to share with you today are going to help you, uh, like you said, get your business right on track, get you more profitable, and really get you thinking about how to make sure your business is running smart. Cool. So what's the first tip? Okay. So um, <laughs> like, let's dive in. Right to the chase. Right to the chase. <laughs> so, so really what, um, what I think uh, we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to use an often forgotten and underutilized business tool, and we're going to put it to work on steroids. And we can create something so powerful that uh, you can grow your business with ease. And um, so what this tool does is it stacks a whole bunch of different plans and strategies. We're going to talk about three of those today. So I think before we go into those three things, I want you to think about this, um, this plan in a different way. I want you to think about your business in a different way. And I want you to think that we have to put some foundations in place so that you can take your business to the next level, whatever that next level is. If it's getting out of the, the crazy time that we could be doing or what we've just gone through, or maybe you're trying to take it to the next level, but these foundations are super important. So I have five foundations in my step, but we're going to talk about the top three. So the first step or the first um, piece of that is called the financial foundation. And I want you to think about this statement. Every decision in your business involves money. So why not make profitable ones? Hmm? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So um, it's true that if you've created your business, you created it somewhere to sell and you, you have your own business and you're hiring people and you're doing things. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that you're looking at your business from that financial aspect and how to make good decisions. And really what it does is it begins with having clarity around that financial decision. And that clarity tells you what the income coming in is and what expenses are going out. 
and how to track all those numbers and what those numbers mean and how they affect your bottom line. So what are your financials when I talk about those kind of things? And financials are a combination of your budget and other financial statements like your profit and loss, your cash flow, uh, your income statement, shareholders equity, balance sheet. These are all really important reports that you have to make financial decisions. Now, don't get scared because your accountant should be able to help you fill out the financial reports. And you can easily make a budget through your previous credit card statements and your bank statements. So here's my tip number one. We're gonna talk about budgeting. <laughs> it's not a diet. And I know I talk about this all the time. People panic when you hear the word budget. It's simply a record of your past income and spending to help you predict what your future income and spending will be. And it's a super big eye opener for many business owners. And it really should be a living, breathing document that has its constant use. And it has fixed and variable expenses on both the income side and the expense side. And here's the trick. It should have a zero based budget balance to it. And what that means is that for every dollar you have coming in, every dollar is accounted for in some sort of expense, leaving zero at the bottom. And I think the most important part people forget when we go into budgeting is to reconcile it. Reconcile it each month. And what that means is really to look at how far off from your plan did you vary. Did you get enough income coming in or projected income that balances? And did you spend more or less than you originally planned? And that will help you understand your budget and get more going. I challenge you to redo your budget based on your actual income and cost for today's environment. Because we're probably in survival mode right now, or maybe even if you're not in survival mode, um, you'll want to look at, and here's the diet side, you're gonna wanna look at cutting out all unnecessary expenses. So if you're a dentist and you've got a big, huge fish tank in your front office and you've got magazines laying out and you're all, you know, prettied up, maybe you wanna look at cutting some of those costs because they're really not necessary for you to be profitable right now. And if you are coming out of these challenging times that we've been in over the past year, then it's a good thing to do to cut. So did I scare you off with the unpleasant budget? No, 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 um, but I, I, I definitely, I, I'm going to be the, the, um, the voice of people who don't like bookkeeping and stuff like that. <laughs> Perfect. I, because there's not very many of you out there, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm probably the only one. Um, I find that most entrepreneurs, that's not necessarily their skill. It's like, they're, you know, you're really good at whatever you're doing. And so that's why you want to be an entrepreneur. And then you're like, wait, I've got to make sure I pay this many taxes and have this much inventory or, you know, balance my expenses, balance my, you know, oh my gosh, your head starts to kind of swarm well, around, I right? Didn't, I didn't say you should be doing your own accounting. Right. That's why I wanted to, that, not. right. So I wanted to add that in for anyone who's like, oh my God, I need to like get all this stuff done. Like, yes. And, uh, well, what, what I have done. And so Marcy, you can tell, I mean, what I've done is I, um, have people you know, have an accountant and a bookkeeper to make sure those things are taken care of and so but in that alone is still setting something up it's still taking energy but it's to help make your business healthier right mm -hmm. is that what you're however you shouldn't have a blind eye to it right. just because you have a bookkeeper and accountant doing your books for you it doesn't mean that you should just spend without understanding Sure. So my reason in saying redo your budget is you truly, since you're signing the checks and putting a rubber stamp on it as the business owner, you really should have a clear understanding and have that clarity around the money that's coming in and out of your business. Because that's one thing that we can control. And when we can control it, it makes the stress go down in the business because then you can make better decisions. So again, I'm not saying you should ever do your own accounting your accountant can help you understand the statements and, and how the money's going. But realistically, you should know mm -hmm. what your money is going out and what money is coming oh, in. 100%. I know that. I, I, yep. 
Yes, I agree. <laughs> and I'm trying to like make sure like it's not so overwhelming of a task. So it's, it's kind of like it, if we back it out to like say a person who's listening has zero plan. Like, like, like I don't know. I just charge it and uh, figure it out. Right. I so think say, I have enough money. Whatever. Yeah. Say so you're, you're at that um, stage. Um, I mean, like probably even just simply, I'm imagining you could start an Excel sheet just to say like, okay, here you had said like to look at your past expenses to predict your future. Like, it's kind of like a, where do I start if I'm having this, if I've never done this before in my business, like keeping it simple, sweetheart is how I'm, how I'm thinking in my mind. Like, how would you Well, start? sweetheart's better than stupid. Yes. I don't, yeah, I don't. Think so, <laughs> so I would say the easiest thing to do is just pull up your last now, now, see, I'm a firm believer that you should use one credit card in your business, hmm. one credit card or whatever in your personal side. So you pull up your one business credit card and you pull up your bank statement. And I would say two, maybe three months. And look at the normal expenses that you have and just list them down. You'll start to see a trend going forward. And then I'd say, think about other expenses that come maybe not so frequently, like quarterly taxes yeah. or something that comes once a year or only a couple of times a year. And then list those on one side, like on a spreadsheet, on a notepad, just list them all out and you'll start to see a history that occurs. Then look at your past income and where did it come from and how consistent is that income? Some of us have variable income, but have consistent expenses. So then you have to, by looking at this kind of statement, it'll give you an idea of how to balance out that income and to match the expenses that you have. It's really not a hard project to do, but let me tell you, this is my jam. So if you need help, reach out to me and I can make your budgeting super simple and give you some really eye-opening ideas and strengths for it. Awesome. Yes, yeah. I think that would be really helpful for people because sometimes that can be a really daunting task, even if, especially if things aren't great. I mean, I know for me, when my months are great and the money's flowing in, I love looking at my numbers. But if I'm not where I want to be on my sales, or maybe I had a hit with expenses, like I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. So I think having a partner in that can be really helpful and you just don't feel so lost and where to get started and how do I do this and you know all that so I think totally get and it. getting it set up to where then you're like okay now I understand I don't need to get all of the weeds but I understand the the 30,000 foot view and the mm -hmm. health of my business and I think that's really important love it that's why it's my number one tip I love it okay okay good. so we're gonna go into um, strategy number two and mm -hmm. tip number two so this is all about your organization platform so I want you to think of your organization as everything you do as your business. And this organization operates on um, how your business is run. So I want you to look at it in the way of five W's and an H. And so what that means is um, it is who you serve and who serves them for you. It's the why you're in business and why they buy from you. It's the what you offer and what price they are willing to pay for it. It's the where you produce it and where you offer it. And it's when you get to work and when you change directions. And then finally, the H is how you provide your deliverables and how you treat everybody around you. And I think this is a really deep section for you to think about but it's the foundation that sets up exactly how you're going to run your business. Mm -hmm. So it is a little, little deep stuff, but this stuff, when you, when you really dig in and there's so many wins and there's so many hows and so many whys you can do in it, do it as the, as the um, search on it. But I want you to know that in tip number two, this may feel really fluffy, right? It's all that ugh, squishy stuff. That's not really money generating. But when it's done right, it is so powerful in your business and your business will thrive off of it because you have that deep clarity. So I want you to evaluate your own five W's and an H and that's again, who, why, what, where, when, and how you do business. And the most important thing you get out of this exercise is the true reason you're being, you're, you are in business. And by answering these questions, you'll take your business into a whole new level and it will support the way you deliver your product or service, 
with major marketing impact. And I want you to look at the answers from your business's point of view and your customer's point of view. And from the product you deliver it and the way that you connect with your customers. It is truly an amazing experience. And when this is done right, you're gonna have a brand new look at your business and I promise it will set you up for skyrocketing success. Very cool. Yeah. So it's answering those questions. That's the strategy and then, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It's the whole idea here is really when you have clarity around your business, you can make better decisions. Like we talked about in the first tip about mm -hmm. doing the budget, by having that crystal clear view of your money, you can decide better how you're going to spend it and even how you're gonna earn it. Mm -hmm. When you look at the organization and why you're doing the business, this is gonna set you up with a foundation that's going to allow your customers to really understand why you are different from everybody else, right? And mm -hmm. when you're in a highly commoditized business and there's a huge amount of competition, you've got to separate yourself. So when you have these clear understandings and strategies around what you do and why you do it and how you do it, it is really the foundation to get you to the next level. So is that something you walk people through when you work with them? I do. Well? Okay. I do. But you know what? You can even, um, whether you're working with someone like me as a business strategist or you're doing this on your own, when you're answering these questions, it tells you why you're doing the business, right? You can do this on your own or I'd love to help you with it because that clarity will help you in all the other aspects. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so are we ready to go on to number three? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so number three is all around your, your, um, your marketing directive. Now, I wanna warn you, I'm a marketing geek by necessity because marketing is everything you do so that your customers can find you. You cannot just build it and expect them to appear and show up. Right. You've got to be able to have and a strategy go after it. And I must, you must, must, must invest in being visible and attractive to your customers. Mm -hmm. Or I promise you, your business will die and it will cost you a lot of money in the process. So marketing should always have a very high priority in your business. Marketing is one of the most common things that business owners don't truly understand. And so they fear it and often do it wrong. They make the attempts with the process before they truly understand who they're talking to. Once you understand your customer and your product, your marketing will have such great results. And your ideal customer, as one of my friends says, will, have, will be throwing their credit cards at you <laughs> because you've talked to them in the way that they wanna hear you and you've got a solution that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. You can't take any shortcuts on marketing and you must, and I mean must, do the work to understand your customer. So here's my tip number three. In my research, I found that in all successful marketing endeavors, you must understand everything about who your ideal customer is, what their problems are that you're solving and where they are in the process of that problem. So what that means is they could be, well, I got a problem, but I don't know if it's solvable to all the way up the other end of the scale saying, I'm looking for someone just like you to solve it for me. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the other piece is where they hang out. So once you know, again, what, who your ideal customer is, the problem you're solving, the process that they are in that problem and where they hang out, your number one goal in marketing is to get there and interrupt their thoughts. So, and this is a weird one, so you can change their beliefs about their current problem, which by the way, you solve. See, people are constantly running their own stories in their head about their own problems and or the solutions that you might be able to provide for them. Once you stop them in their tracks, your number two job in marketing is to provide a better story in their head than their own story that's running along. So as an example, they may be thinking, oh, I can't 
find more customers because of not enough marketing money. This is just a, a random example. If you, if you can change it around to say you don't need money to find customers, maybe you just need to take time and energy to be socially active to find customers. See, you're changing their thought. Mm -hmm. You're taking away their current belief and you're entering your new belief into their head. It is really a phenomenon that works amazing if you can learn the tricks. So once you get in front of them, again, you're, you're stopping their train of thoughts and now you're changing their belief. And the great thing about that is that now they're starting to listen to you. They may not be ready right now, but they will be ready soon. And if you're continuously changing that thought in their mind and putting you as the solution, they're gonna come your way. So see, much of today's marketing doesn't take the needed time to learn these tricks and truly understanding what we learned in the five W's and an H as to what their problem is and who that ideal customer is. So they throw their money at their marketing and it doesn't work. So I think it's really putting the foundations and time and energy and learning about your business and learning about your ideal customer and the problems they have, and then you're gonna get much greater results. Now, I wanna recap with you. So we talked about budgeting. So we know how much money we've got coming in or going. And this is, this is triage at, at its best, mm -hmm. is to learn about your budget. The second thing we learned about that was truly powerful was creating your five W's and an H. And those five W's and an H will help you in your marketing directives. So you know how to stop your customers in their tracks and get them to consider and look at you as their solution, as hopefully the only solution for them. And when you do these three little steps, you can really turn your business around. All about profitability. Yeah. Can you give an example of like, and that was a lot of content. So, um, like one, one of your clients, um, how you help one of your clients with one of those, one of those tips? Sure. Well, um, each one has a different, has different yeah, client okay. strengths to them. Yeah. Um, which one would you like me to focus on the marketing, the organizational or the budget? Hey, how about budget? We'll start with budget. budget. I mean, a lot of people we'll start are with this stressful budgets one. right now. <laughs> right. So I had a chiropractic client. Um, she was uh, working for a, a doctor as an associate for almost 10 years, and she was wanting to go out on her own. So how we helped her was just before she went out on her own, we laid out financially all the necess necessary things that she'd need to do and what she'd have to do in her sales to help achieve those goals that she was trying to do. So when she left that company and started her own company, Mm -hmm. We had a seven month period in the, in the end of the year. And by the time we opened her, her store in, I think it was um, April when we opened it. And by the time we got to December, she had already doubled her projections nice. because we had the foundational financial strategy in place. And not only that, she expanded. The, in her second year of business, she was doing so good because she understood her numbers and exactly where she had to be. Now, she put other pieces in place as well, like the marketing and having the organizational pieces in place. But she expanded and was on track last year to do like $600,000 in business in your second year of being in business. That's awesome. That to me is pretty impressive but it was all the foundational stuff we worked on. Oh, wonderful. Very good. Yeah. I would lead with that. That's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> it's a great story. It's a great story. Oh, I love that. Okay. Very cool. So I know you have a, a way for people to learn more about what you offer or Absolutely. tell me about that. Great. Well, thanks. So I have a program um, or actually more tips. Let's just start off with the easy entry free stuff. So go to fail proof biz and that's biz.com and pick up my six tips to help you not only survive but thrive in your business Very super good. easy things that you can implement you can pick little pieces out of it but anything we have in our business 
you can talk about ideas and ideas are only good if you act on them. So I want you to take one or two or three of these ideas I talked about today, or even some of the six tips that I give you in that special report, take action. You've got to move on them or you're just going to be in the same place you were yesterday. Yep. Oh, I hear that. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for all of those uh, pieces. And I think uh, really a lot for people to, you know, okay, I got to get, you know, new year, we're get, entering the fourth quarter. You have plenty of time to get everything ready for 2021. Well, you know, depending on when you're watching this, you have time to do that at any time of the year, but it's always a good yes. reminder to do that. And um, so one question that doesn't have yes. to do with your business, and that is, it's called Rock Your Talk. So I got to, I got to know what's your, who's your favorite rock singer or rock band? What, Oh my love? gosh, if we're talking about rock, I'd you're have to say rock. Aerosmith. I'd ah. have to say Aerosmith has always been my favorite with uh, Steven Tyler doing That's his right. little dance yeah. and singing and hitting the high He has a lot yeah. of energy, that man. Wow, a lot more energy than I do. <laughs> right? I love yeah, well, we, we know early on in his life, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was it's, added it's, stuff to sure. get all that energy. But now he's on a natural now, high. He's on a natural now that high he's now. been on a natural <laughs> high since, since, you know, for the last 15, 20 years, he's mm -hmm. still killing it out there. So I love watching him. Performer. Very cool. Yes. I like them too. Who's your favorite band? Oh, uh, I have a lot. Um, uh, it, depending on the era, um, some of my favorites are Pearl Jam and, yep. well, Eddie Vedder, he's my boyfriend, everybody knows that. Um, uh, and then, uh, but Fleetwood Max, like always like one of my, I'm, I don't know, Pink Floyd, I, Dire Straits, all, like, and I'm not even like Def Leppard, great. I mean, I go all over the place. Elvis Presley. Did you see Stevie Nicks a couple of years ago in Rancho said, Santa Margarita? Nice. Wait. What? In she, Rancho Santa Margarita. She played, well, you know, uh, near where we're oh, located. Like, so the, cover this, band? the music in the park. No, Stevie Nicks came out and played one year. For she real? She came out, for real. Stevie Nicks is local. And she came out and sang. It was awesome. I, I like want to say it's maybe three years ago. No, 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 no. Oh, it was no. Stevie Nicks. Darn it. It was so I bad. It. it was well, great. I did see her for my birthday this year at a, a golf tournament or a golf course concert that was really really cool um yeah and it happened to be on my birthday it was a it was a the best it was really cool and my best friend had flown in and we you know it was it was, it was a great time wonderful right? wonderful um memory yes and right I, I well thank that. you for having me on this show thank this was you. wonderful to be able to share with it and i hope i've provided some value yes i'm all about giving and um i like to share what i've earned and learned so that's awesome yeah. all right uh all the listeners out there remember to be kind to yourself be kind to somebody else subscribe to the channel so that you continue to get more expert tips and hopefully uh we will see you on the next episode bye bye And it takes me a little longer. I got a new thing. It takes you can chop longer. at the end, right? I don't. I don't. Hold on. I've lost us. Wow. This is the second time this has happened to me. <laughs> we'll see. That's okay. Now They're you know, getting the natural learning. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody. It's the little stop recording at the bottom, right? <laughs>